Hi, today we will be talking about the new Rep Robotics expansion hub. We will be doing an unboxing video and see what the hub is all about. So this is actually ordered from the uh, Rep Robotics website. So as you can see, it's uh, reprobotics.com and instead of the uh, FTC storefront. The only reason I said that is if you order it through the FTC storefront, which is whenever you register your FTC team, you can actually get a discount and you also get more cables when you order it from the storefront. So I highly recommend you, uh, if you want to get the expansion of to get it from the storefront first before going to the rubberbotics.com website. So this is the expansion hub right here. I'm going to put it aside for now. And you also get a card. And this one talks about uh, registering your new expansion hub and talks about how you can get software updates and also getting more information about your expansion hub through the Rev Robotics website. On the back, you can see a Rev Robotics wiring reference sheet, reference sheet, and this shows you an example of the many devices you can connect to this hub. This is why a lot of teams are actually very excited for this new product, is if you can see, you can actually connect a motor, servos, and sensors to it. And that is one thing that a lot of the teams is looking forward into, because now that we can all connect all those devices in just one hub. And let me put that aside for now. And then on the back, there's two cables that comes with it. And the first one I'll be talking about is a power, power cable with an XT30 connector on it. This is how you can connect the uh, power cable to the expansion hub right here. And another cable that comes with it is a 3-pin JSTPH connector. So this actually goes into the uh, RS485 port on the expansion hub. I'll talk more into that later. But this is what allows you to link another expansion hub to the hub that you already have. And you also get Rev Robotic stickers. The first one I got, I only got one sticker, but now I got two. So I'm wondering if I get another Rev Robotics expansion hub. Maybe I'll get three stickers the next time. So now we'll be more in depth with the expansion hub. So the first look, this does look very, very sleek. It looks really nice and it looks very robust. So they did a pretty good job. One thing that I did notice is when I opened the first one that I had, which is um, that one right there, if you can focus, um, is that I did see that the labels on the uh, the ports were peeling off a little bit. I'm not very concerned with it just because it's not really going to affect the uh, performance of the expansion hub. But I did notice that um, over time, if it does peel off, it would be a hassle just not knowing the labels if it is gonna work or if it is gonna peel off. I don't think so, but that's just one thing that uh, I realized when I first opened it. Um, also, another thing, if you notice, is there is no internal on-off switch in the back in Modern Robotics, uh, the powder, pow power distribution module. It had an internal on-off switch on it. And this one doesn't. So if you actually look at the uh, Rev Robotics reference sheet, you do need an external on-off switch to turn it on and off. And that is one thing I highly recommend because you don't want to just plug in your battery and directly powering the uh, expansion of. That would be a very bad uh, wiring practice. And if you notice, there's two dual XT30 connectors in here. And I believe the reason for that is, let's say you want to have two hubs and you put in the power for your battery, uh, the, the power that's coming from your battery, and you need to power your under the other hub that you attach. That's how you attach it is uh, daisy chaining it or doing it in series. I'm not 100% sure what the uh, proper or legal way of doing it, but I'm assuming that that's why they have two dual XT30 connector in there. 
I do I do need to double check the uh, documentation in FTC and or on rubber robotics on why there's two in there but that that's the main reason I would think that they have it uh, dual XT30 connectors there and here the next thing is you can see the uh, four slots four motor slots and side by side or right by it is the uh, encoder ports too those are standard encoder ports that we've seen before from NeverS and uh, from Andromark and also from Rev Rev Robotics motors and these pins right here are they are called the two pin JST uh, VH connectors and I've never seen those in FTC before but they do look very promising they look like an industrial grade connector so it looks pretty robust and if you see it it does latch on into it pretty good so I highly recommend for you guys to actually start looking at those connectors so that you can uh, start investing on, on it and learning how to crimp them properly if you have to. Um, I believe uh, Rubber Robotics is going to start selling them pretty soon too. But if you can't wait, you can always look it up. And I know they are they do exist. And they are an industrial type connector. So, And I think if you're into RC or drones, they do have similar connectors that... Uh, that carry those connectors well there was a little bit of a tongue twist there well uh, the next stop is the uh, servo controller and on the servo controller it's a typical 6 channel for the uh, PWM and they are the PWM ports just like we've seen before you also get a uh, plus 5 volt power and you have two of them and I have a re I have one reason why they put it in there um, I'm not 100% why they also have 5 volt power up we've never or I've never needed to use a 5 volt, 5 volt power on FTC before other than maybe uh, using it for LED um, we also get analog digital IO and I2C ports for sensors and all these right here, the connectors are a 4-pin JST PH connector. And you see the RS-485, you get two ports for that one. And those are the 3-pin uh, uh, JST PH connectors right there. And you also get the uh, mode button, I don't know if you can hear that, right there. And you get the uh, UART for debugging purposes. and I believe that's the uh, programmable LED light. So that is a quick tour guide of all the ports on the expansion hub. One thing that you can't really see here is it does have another cool feature which is the uh, bo Boch, or I don't know how to pronounce it, but it has a Bosch 9 axis IMU or the inertial measurement sensor fusion on it. And what that does is it actually has a gyroscope, a magnetic sensor, and an accelerometer built in on this expansion hub. That's probably another reason why you want to get this hub is it already has uh, one of the sensors or a couple of the sensors that you might need for FTC instead of actually buying them separately. So that is definitely one thing I do want to uh, test out on the couple on on the. Uh, couple of days ahead and another thing that I want to show you guys is do a size comparison of the uh, the old modern robotics uh, modules the, the one thing I don't have is a uh, the PDM right now but let's say uh, this is a, a robot a, a demo uh, a demo robot that we built uh, last year and if you see those are legacy and they're, we have motor controllers there. Um, the PDM used to be here but um, we had to use a PDM for other purposes. Um, but this is definitely a little bit bigger than the PDM. If you see the size difference right there. And if you see the legacy module, it's, it's probably like three legacy modules if you can fit it in there. Also, you can see the the size comparison to say you have four motors in and, and this only holds two so this is definitely 
more compact if you're trying to do wiring for FDC. So, and that's pretty much it for now. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing more testing with it. As you can see, I do have two expansion hub and the reason why I have two is I want to see the performance of two for, uh, expansion hubs and see how they connect to each other. And because I know a lot of teams will be using more than four motors. So, and one thing that is a big question mark for me right now is using the uh, ultrasonic sensor or the uh, modern robotic sensor. They call it the range sensor. Um, right now they said uh, they have a level shifters and I believe if you order it from storefront, you'll actually get a level shifter for the uh, modern robotic sensor. But right now, because I don't have a level shifter, because it didn't come with the uh, the package, I actually got this from uh, SparkFun, and I uh, soldered, it, soldered it a little bit so that I can test out the uh, ultrasonic sensor. And one of the reason coming back to the uh, five volt power is the SparkFun does need a five volt uh, power to convert the the ultrasonic sensor because the ultrasonic sensor uses 5 volt instead of the 3.3 uh, volts that the I2C ports that the expansion hub use. Um, uh, I don't want to confuse you guys right now. Um, this is a general overview of the expansion hub. But if you guys do have any more questions, please um, comment down below. And if there's any recommendation for a next video, um, I am definitely looking forward for any critics or to, to make this uh, video better. So thank you so much again for watching. Good luck and I'll be testing this out pretty soon.